The time may be right for oil exploration in Namibia. Recon Africa is an oil and gas company that is looking into that African nation for oil and gas development. And with me is the CEO of Recon Africa, Jay Park. So great to have you here. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Jay. Fascinating to hear about what the potential could be in Namibia for energy. So kind of give me kind of a, a summarization of where you're at and then we'll talk in some more sure. detail. Sure. Well, uh, Recon Africa is a, a junior exploration company. But we have a very exciting uh, license opportunity in Namibia. Our rights cover a huge area, 6.3 million acres, 25,000 square kilometers. And we've done an Aeromag survey, had it interpreted, and what we have is a deep, wide basin uh, with a sedimentary basin that is an analog to the kinds of, of basins that have been discovered in South Africa, including one of the world's largest shale discoveries, Shell's White Hill opportunity in South Africa. We're in the same depositional environment. So what we think we have is that we have a block that's almost the same size as the Eagleford, held entirely by our one company with a 90% interest. Interesting. Now, do you think that Namibia hasn't been explored because maybe the technology hasn't been there to really find out the potential yet? Or Well, in the area, uh, Angola to the north is a, is a well-known oil state. Mm -hmm. Namibia hasn't been as well explored, and so there's a race on to be the first to make Namibia's commercial discovery. Okay. We're excited right now because we look on this onshore opportunity as being a, a, an excellent situation to find and make that discovery. There's some, we're in a race with a number of offshore companies that are exploring in that region. Okay. Yeah, kind of lay the land for me. So you mentioned it's onshore is what you're looking at. Is there yeah. also some offshore activity going on as well? And are you working together? Like, how does yeah. the situation look? Like we're as, as a small oil company. We're more focused on on the onshore activities where the costs of drilling a well are less. Um, but right now, most of the activity, exploration activity, recently and in, and this year, will be by larger companies exploring in the offshore. Okay. And who are those? Are larger oh, we have. You'll see uh, Exxon is okay. there. You'll see um, uh, Shell is there, uh, and and there's some other uh, intermediates in that in that same region as okay. well. Okay. So the big players. The big players are 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 looking at. Namibia offshore because they see it as an analog to Angola to the north, which is a uh, has a lot of production. Okay. Now, also there was um, a thirty. So you're going to be getting a rig, right? That's yes. drilling really deep. Right. So explain that to me. Well, we've recently purchased a rig uh, um, here in the U.S. Uh, that we'll be shipping to Namibia. We're doing this because. In the southern cone of Africa, no one's drilled a well onshore as deep as we're about to go. So we need to bring the equipment to Namibia in order to do this. Okay. And we're, that's on its way now. Its way. Uh, and so we're very excited at the opportunity. We want to uh, do a, a, a stratigraphic test wells that get down to 13,000 feet to find out whether we have a working hydrocarbon system. If there's a hydrocarbon kitchen, source rock, as we believe there is based on analogs in South Africa, uh, then, then, uh, then we're off. Okay, then you'll know whether you need to go further? Uh, that well, you kind of hint of a hint? what a stratigraphic test well will tell us is whether or not we have the uh, source rock, the shales that generate oil and gas, and which could then be exploited through non-conventional exploration or development activities. But we're also in a location where the rifts and faults in this area create excellent traps for uh, for conventional oil and gas. So once we know whether or not there's a hydrocarbon kitchen, mm -hmm. we'll look at both unconventional and conventional exploration opportunities. Now I know, like, and there are different types of oil. I mean, I know like the, the Saudi oil people like, it's kind of smooth, doesn't need as much refining. I mean, what would mm -hmm. you expect to find in Namibia? Well, that's what we don't know yet as a result of its early stage of exploration. And that's what a stratigraphic test well is going to, is going to tell us, a series of stratigraphic test wells will tell us whether it's uh, oil, gas, um, uh, light oil, condensate. Um, what we've seen to take an analog to, say, the, uh, um, uh, the Eagleford in, in Texas, is you have a gas area, a condensate area, and a light oil 
area in uh, in that, and maybe we will find something like that. Okay. Now, in terms of like macroeconomics, so oil's what around sixty dollars a barrel or mm -hmm. so. Um, I mean, what price does it have to be to make it worth the cost of exploration? And are you worried at all about the long-term impact of oil? How we're going to renewables more? I mean, how does mm -hmm. the macroeconomics yep. fit in? Good. Well, we think that the current prices are sufficiently attractive and uh, to, to make this project economic. And so we're very excited to proceed um, uh, on the basis of where the price is now. What does the future hold? Well, everyone's got their own crystal ball. My own view is that we've seen so little discovery in the last four or five years. We're producing more oil than we're discovering that I think um, we're, we're in for um, some shortfalls in supply in the coming years. So in the, in the medium term, I'm bullish about the price of oil and, and think that it's, it's going to be on an upswing. Thank you so much, Jay, for coming in. And best of luck. Well, thank you very much. Yes, and thank you as well for joining us. We'll be right back.